All right, hello everybody. My name is Dylan. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Figma. And as of right now, 8.13, I think, Pacific time on May 10th, 2022, I'm coming to you live from San Francisco. Uh, I'm so excited you're all here. Welcome to our first 24-hour config. Today we're coming together as a global community to celebrate design, creativity, and collaboration. We have 68 sessions with 100 speakers, and I feel so lucky to be together with all of you. I also have so much gratitude for everyone in our community that's contributed to this moment. We would not be here without all of you. And today, these are scary and uncertain times for many of us. It's easy to feel helpless when forces larger than ourselves are at play. But we are not helpless. We are designers, builders, creatives, and we have the ability to shape the world around us. Maybe you want to enable more economic access. Reimagine how homes are built. Help our climate. Or spread the message of peace. If you see something you want to happen, if you want to change something locally or globally, there's nothing stopping you. I hope some of the content shared over the next 24 hours brought to you by speakers from 24 countries, every continent except Antarctica, will inspire you to be bolder and act with more urgency. I also want to thank Nike and its digital product design teams for teaming up with us on this keynote. Over many decades, Nike has found ways to continually explore the brand promise that everyone is an athlete. And at Figma, we believe that everyone can be a designer. In the spirit of that, last year we introduced FigJam to help bring more people into the earliest stages of the design process. And this year, we're introducing, we're introducing new ways to work in Figma and in FigJam to share your ideas and connect design with code. So let's dive in. And again, everything you see is live. So internet, please wish me luck. Hopefully, nothing breaks. All right. So we're going to open up today and start in FigJam. Uh, welcome to Config. Here's a brainstorm doc that we've done together as a team uh, to, for how to promote Config. And so you can see that we've uh, basically worked together to create some stickies. And that's because config, uh, FigJam is a really nice open space to have that open canvas and to riff off of each other's ideas. One feature that we recently introduced is sections, that you can see here. It's a good way to categorize and group ideas into uh, different sections. And so you can see here that we have some stickies that have received reactions, uh, friends of Figma watch parties across the world to promote config, highlighting new features we shift with appearances from product and engineering. You're going to see that on all the breaks today. Exclusive new swag drops, get excited. And there's also some ideas that you know, we didn't go with after all. Um, uh, and you can see that we've kept on going here. Uh, and um, you know, we've done a lot of different things to figure out how we can uh, promote and do a wrap up. Um, and now that we've had this brainstorm completed, you can see that uh, we now want to get to a place where these ideas are turned into a more solidified plan. But often that work happens in other tools. So today, as our first announcement, we're excited to launch a few integrations that will help make that happen. First, I'm going to show off our new JIRA widget. Uh, with this widget, uh, first let me show you how to insert it. I can just search for JIRA. And you'll see here uh, my JIRA widget. I can just drag in to the canvas. Um, and with this, I can take uh, ideas from FigJam and bring them right into JIRA. And I can take tasks from JIRA and bring them into FigJam. So for example, I can highlight uh, these different stickies and press Turn Stickies into Issues. I can choose a project, Config Launch, an issue type, Task, and press Convert Stickies. I can also import an issue or project as well. Or I can edit an issue. So for example, I can say, hello world. Not sure why I'm saying that. Uh, but then go to priority, and I can actually change the priority to something else and save my changes. And this will all sync live to JIRA. Of course, we know that not everyone uh, is working in the same tools. 
And so we've also introduced two other widgets as well, uh, for Asana and for GitHub integration. With the Asana widget on the left, I can use that to also uh, bring tasks and projects in from Asana or turn stickies into tasks. And with this GitHub widget on the right, you can create new issues and also bring new issues uh, right into FigJam. So with all this, you might be wondering, what is a widget? And if you haven't encountered them already, widgets are kind of like a Figma plugin that lives on your canvas. Everyone in FigJam can see and interact with the same widgets with you. In addition to working together, teams need a way to bond and have fun in FigJam. FigJam is all about collaboration, play, and that spirit of uh, being able to riff off of each other. And we think that widgets are a really good way to do that in the context of a team brainstorm or a team meeting. So we've been really inspired by the community. For example, uh, some widgets that I've really enjoyed recently, Whose Turn Is It by uh, Elin Lee, um, Table by Gavin, and Navigate by Amin. Uh, we've actually uh, have Navigate set up here. I can press here, and it'll go to the different section. And so we've been experimenting with some different widgets internally. They start off as just hacks and have grown into some things that we're going to ship today. So today we're releasing a few fun widgets that start off as these internal experiments. And for example, uh, one of them that I'm excited to share is this green card widget. So I have a green card here from Tom. It's to Dylan. I'll press the button to peel to open it. And it's going to open up. All right. I think it's going to turn over. And it says, good luck in the live demo, no pressure. Thank you, Tom. Uh, we also have here a voice memo widget uh, from Burst Bell. And I'll play it right now. Hey, Dylan, have you mentioned how easy it is to build widgets? Ah, that's right. Thank you, Bursabelle. Uh, it is very easy to learn about widgets. And if you want to hear more about these widgets, check out Rohit's and Max's talk during the break at 8.45 PM Pacific time. Anyone in our community can now build widgets. And to make that easier, we've made a new Figma plugin called Widget Code Generator to help bring widget ideas to life even faster. So if I flip over to this uh, Figma file right here, this is where uh, the voice, over med voice memo widget was defined. And now I can go into my plugins. I can click on Widget Code Generator. And I can just select a frame. And you can see right here that I have a bunch of code emitted. I can copy that code, and I can add some logic in. Uh, and this is basically the code that is needed to render a widget. Hopefully, this makes it even easier to go from concepts in Figma to widgets in FigJam. All right, there's one more section here. Let's check what it says. And it says, shall we move on to some exciting new stuff in Figma? All right, let's do it. So I'm going to open up my Figma demo here. And for today's Figma demos, we're going to be diving into a number of use cases that use the Nike Podium design system. So here we are in Figma. And we're taking a look at designs for the Nike Run Club app. This app tracks your running progress and provides weekly coaching plans. And you're going to see right here that we have a number of cards for each day of the week. These cards are stacked vertically, which is a perfect application for auto layout. If you don't know what auto layout is, as a quick refresher, auto layout allows you to define direction, padding, and spacing uh, direction for stacks. So I think it's fair to say, personally, uh, based on a lot of user feedback, that auto layout is probably one of Figma's most feared features. We've heard loud and clear that it's one of the most complex parts of Figma. We also know that users of auto layout want more power. Today, we're announcing a redesigned auto layout, which is going to be both easier to use and also more powerful. The first thing you'll notice is that the layer order on the canvas, oops. If I go right here, the layer order on the canvas is actually reflected in the Layers panel. And this might seem like a small thing, but previously this was reversed, and we heard a ton of feedback that this was confusing. So now it's fixed. Next, you can see that we now visualize spacing between objects on the canvas. This makes it easier to identify which frames have auto layout. At Figma, we love the idea of direct manipulation. And we want to make it easy to edit spacing in context without having to look back and forth and back and forth to the Layers panel and Properties panel. So you can simply scrub values to change spacing now right on the canvas. And that's the way you can figure out just what's right. You can even hold Shift if you want to 
and it will respect your nudge settings in Figma. You can see that for some reason I'm set up to a 10 point nudge rather than eight. Uh, I'll change that later. And of course, you can change padding on the canvas as well. So if I go down here, I can change my padding. I can also press Alt to change padding on both sides at the same time. Now, if I want to be more precise, I can click and I can edit this, and that will directly change the, the value of the padding right on the canvas without having to go to the properties panel. Another auto layout change we've made in this redesign is an updated properties panel. So we've moved the fill, hug, uh, quick settings to be closer to the object's dimensions on this right hand side here. We've also, on the right, uh, improved the entire auto layout panel and we've added additional features. Oops. Like text baseline adjustment, alignment rather. But this is not just a redesign. We've also added two brand new capabilities to auto layout. So let's go over to our plans page to take a look. Um, here we are looking at the plans page and each card represents a different run. These cards have a pretty typical auto layout setup where there's an image on top and a frame with some text below, all in a vertical arrangement. Now let's say that we wanna add a headline here and this new badge as well. So if I select both and drag them onto the auto layout frame, you'll see that it respects the stack order and uh, it pushes the content down. Unfortunately, this is not what we want. So sometimes people solve for this by making additional frames, but this makes our design way more complex. To address this problem, today we're announcing absolute positioning for auto layout. And you can turn auto layout absolute positioning on by pressing this button on the upper right hand side. And when I do that, it will now make it so that absolute positioning is enabled and I can drag this around in a freeform way exactly where I want without following the rules of the auto layout stack. And I'm gonna take this new button, and I'm gonna put that badge on the upper right hand side. There we go. So now that the cards look the way we want, let's add them back into our plan section. So I'm just gonna drag them over and drop them in. Now the current stacked arrangement is nice, uh, but I kinda wanna explore a few more options. For example, it'd be cool if we had sort of a wallet-esque interface where instead of having to scroll down through all the cards, the user could kind of shuffle through them uh, and have them be more overlapping instead. Lucky for us, the second thing we're announcing today that Auto Layout now supports is negative spacing between items. So we can simply scrub on the up on the canvas. Oops. And now that I've scrubbed up on the canvas, I can get it to exactly where I want uh, with my negative spacing. This makes it really useful, not only for vertical stacks, but for horizontal as well. So it's great for horizontal face piles. So in summary, we've updated auto layout with a new UI on canvas controls and improved stack order. We've also introduced more type controls, absolute positioning and negative spacing. We hope this makes auto layout a lot more simple and powerful for all of you. Simple and more powerful is always the balance we're trying to strike at Figma. Okay, next, let's shift our attention to this run detail screen. Uh, these screens give duration, distance, and pacing information about a specific run that is selected by the user. And this example here has a similar treatment to before where there's a headline on top of a background image. It's a typical situation where if um, you have an existing type style from your design system, it may have been optimized for use on a solid color background. And you might wanna make some typographic tweaks and make sure the text stays legible on a busier background as well. So today, we're making this easier by adding variable font support in Figma. Honestly, variable font supports, sorry, variable fonts are just so cool. And ever since they've come out, I've won them in Figma. So I'm really glad we are finally launching this feature. For example, we have Helvetica now there supported uh, and in play here on the text panel. If we go into our type settings, I can switch over to variable and scroll over and make it more obvious. If I take the weight here, uh, I can see actually on this type settings panel all the different controls I have. So uh, I can actually control the weight 
and just turn all the way from the hairline version to the extra bold version. I also have the ability to control the width. And we can go from a condensed version all the way back to regular width again. Lastly, we can control optical size as well with a slider. And this enables us to transition between different versions of the font that are optimized for different sizes. If we move to the left end of the scale, we get a version of the font optimized for very small sizes. If we move to the right end of the scale, we get a version optimized for display or headline sizes. We can also just check this text, check this uh, checkbox. And now, if I scrub uh, and make my fonts bigger or smaller, Figma will automatically update the size of the optimal, optical size automatically in order to make it just right. Okay, so we also want to make sure that this text looks good on this adjacent screen. However, there's a dark overlay blocking us from selecting the text. You've probably been in situations like this before. And yes, of course I could go to my layers panel, I could open this, I could find the title, but who wants to do that? Sometimes you just want to go right in and select the text. So today we're announcing uh, that you can have a new, we've had a long feature for a long time called outline mode, and today we're announcing an improvement to outline mode that will enable you to grab behind objects. So instead of uh, searching the layers panel, you can just go directly to this text, uh, and you can just press Shift O to enter outline mode, you'll be able to see a skeleton XDRI version of your design. Uh, now the overlay no longer black selection, I can make the selection and return right to what I'm doing. That's not all. There's so much more that's covered in this outline mode. Uh, I'm especially excited about the way we've improved the Boolean ops treatment as well as uh, stroke styles. And so if you're interested in hearing more about all the other fun improvements we have to outline mode, check them out during Lauren and Heather's talk at the break at 1.45 p.m. Pacific time today. All right, now that we've looked at Nike Run Club a bit, let's check out another experience supported by Nike Podium, and that's sneakers. No, I'm not talking about the 1992 thriller movie worshipped by Marchand on the Figma design team. No, speakers, sneakers is a shopping experience that gives members fair, secure access to Nike's most coveted drops. All right, so on the right-hand side, here I am in sneakers. And if you take a look at this feed section right here, you'll notice that we have a common tab pattern at the top. We have some tabs with UI controls, uh, stacked underneath. And when you're designing interfaces like this, it's sometimes helpful to add a subtle divider. Some people will use a line or a rectangle to do this, and there are even some out there wild people who use inner shadow effects for this use case, which it totally was not designed for. We did not make inner shadow effects for that. Today, I'm excited to share the madness is going to finally stop. Uh, we're excited to announce individual strokes in Figma. This has been a request we've heard forever, uh, with individual strokes, you're going to be able to control all four sides of an object. And the default behavior is the same. I can go in and add a stroke, uh, but now I can also choose uh, all, top, bottom, left, right, or custom. If I go to custom, um, I can make it so that I can stroke it however I want to on different sides. In this case, I actually just want to go to the bottom. And so I'll do that, and I'll select uh, the Nike gray as well. Now I'm going to go into my feed. I'm going to add additional stroke here. I'll make it weight two. And um, I'm going to make this on the bottom as well. And I'll use the Nike red. And now I've got a great way to show the selection state. Again, this has been a request forever since the earliest days of Figma. I'm so proud to say the weird hacks and adding annoying extra objects to the canvas. I'm glad that those days are hopefully finally over. All right. Next, let's look at some screens that have some animation. I'm going to scroll over here to the right and go into prototype mode. Uh, over here, we have our Gotham sequence. And this is an exciting flow for users because it means that they're seeing the screen, they've got that sh uh, pair of shoes they really wanted. And what's happening here is that we're using Smart Animate to transition between three different states. Uh, you have know, the state on the left, then we have a dissolve in for our sneakers coming in. And then we've got the text dropping in from the top. Um, and you know, the text as it drops, we really want it to feel like it has some gravity to it. 
uh, we wanted to kind of give it a little bounce maybe, have some physics. Um, so right now, if I click on our prototype, you'll see that we have a pretty basic curve um, that kind of slows down at first and speeds up. But maybe we want to make this more realistic and have more weight to the text. Uh, today, in order to do this, we're announcing an addition to Smart Animate. This will allow you to create spring animations in Figma. We have a number of different presets here as well, from gentle to quick to bouncy to slow, all the way to custom spring. And just to make sure that we really know how this works, I will make this uh, a really nice uh, spring animation here. And I'm going to go into our prototype. And if I go in, I can now see how that looks. Maybe that was like a little too much. So instead, let's see what the presets look like. We've got gentle spring here. We have quick spring, a bouncy spring, not as bouncy as mine. And we've got a custom one we've just tweaked already to make it just right. Uh, before we leave the prototype viewer, though, I want to share another new feature with you. A lot of times, we're sharing prototypes to get feedback or conduct a user test. And for a lot of security conscious companies, freelancers, and agencies, making a link public is just not an option. Today, we're announcing password protected links in Figma available on all paid plans. So we go into these share settings. You can see right now it's shared with a few people. And if I want to make it so that it has now a password that protects the link, I can go from anyone with the link to anyone with the link and password. Also, the password as config 2022. I'll press save. And now if I share this with anyone, they'll have to enter the password in order to access the prototype. Everything will be safe and secure. OK. And take a drink of water. For this next demo, we're going to talk about design systems. So let's head over to Nike's Podium Design System Library. And as we look through this library, you'll notice that the team at Nike is absolutely meticulous in organizing uh, and documenting their design system. It's truly impressive. Uh, and I'm glad to be able to share it with all of you. Heading to this button section, uh, we can see the button component set, which was created using Figma's variant feature. And you can see here we have a lot of different states. We have primary buttons, secondary buttons. We've got different icon configurations. They're small, they're large, they're medium, enable, disabled, light, dark. Uh, this is a really large set of components. And today, in order to help manage this complexity, we're excited to announce a new feature that builds on variants called component props. Component props makes it so that a button -like set like this is easier to manage. And it makes it easier to consume a design system as well. OK, if I flip over to this button refactor branch and go down to buttons, You can see right here uh, that we've been able to reduce this button from 108 variants to just, to just 36. So it's way easier to manage if you're working on a design system. And to get a sense for what's happening, let's look at a simpler case. We'll go to this sim single button up here. This button is pretty simple. I've got an icon on the left. I have the text in the middle. And on the left, we have this icon that can be toggled on or off. So I'm going to add an instance swap property for this icon, and I'll call it icon. I'm also going to add a layer visibility property called icon left. And then for this text, I'll create a content property or a text property, um, and I'll call that label. OK, now if I create an instance, you can start to see how this works. On the right hand side here, I have my icon, which I can click and then switch to a different uh, instance. Oops. I can also disable or enable the icon in the first place with my layer visibility. And if I disable the layer visibility, you'll notice that the other icon, uh, this uh, ability to switch to the instance does not show up anymore. Lastly, I can change that label in the properties panel. So to show the full uh, built out button, I'll go back here to the sneakers app. And I can select these two buttons, go back to design mode, and you can see all the different uh, props on the right-hand side. I can toggle the icon on the right or left. 
and here it is on the left. And uh, I can swap it for something maybe that's more appropriate, because this is the part where we've got our shoe, and now we're going to schedule where to pick it up. And so I'm going to change uh, this icon on the left-hand side to a calendar instead. And I will also change this text. Oops. I'll change this text to choose this store. There we go. So I hope you'll see that we've made this consumption experience way easier to understand. And hopefully, component props make it easier for your, to you to maintain your libraries and also use them as well. There's so much more power behind component props. I'm barely scratching the surface right now. If you want to see more, and if you can stay awake, tune into Tom's talk at 5.45 AM Pacific time during the break. That's tomorrow. Whew, OK. Let's take a quick demo intermission. We have a few features to share with you super fast. Number one, we know it's important for you to have your favorite files at your fingertips. So we've now made it easier for you to favorite a file and have it show on the left-hand side nav. Number two, we've also made some improvements to branching and merging. You can now put a branch into a review state. You can add reviewers, and others can suggest changes. This is available on our org plan, and it should make it easier to communicate what state a branch is currently in. Number three, we've made a number of improvements to our international keyboard shortcuts. We now support different keyboard types better, and commands that are previously inaccessible should work. This is available now in beta. We'd love your input. All right, we also understand how important accessibility is. We know we have a lot of work to do. So we're starting to make some small steps in improving the accessibility of Figma. You'll see more over the next 6 to 12 months. But today, we're pleased to ship an improved WCAG 3.0 compliant color scheme to Figma. This should improve color contrast ratios. And uh, y'all, is it possible to get the lights turned back on? Anyone? OK, well, maybe this is the perfect time to share, uh, as many of you have already noticed, that Figma now has a dark mode. We know so many people have asked for this, and we're glad to finally give you the choice. The team has worked hard to refine every surface in Figma's UI, from the file browser to the editor. Also, Figma developers can now update their plugins to support dark mode. We cannot wait to hear what you think. All right, one last thing. I've been up here demoing all sorts of stuff, and you might say I've been in the spotlight, but Figma is all about collaboration and sharing the spotlight with others. Today, we're announcing an improvement to the way that multiplayer works. All right, you can see uh, that we're in here, and uh, someone is requesting the spotlight. Here we go, Jake. And uh, after this loads, I will now be following Jake in observation mode. And I can follow him around, and you can see that uh, people are typing. Yay! config, uh, and we're all able to watch uh, together in this file. At any point, I can also click my own avatar and press Spotlight. And now, uh, people will start following me. And as I move around, I'll now, they'll now be observing me uh, as I have the Spotlight. We think this will uh, make it so your multiplayer sessions in Figma and FigJam are even better. All right, that's a wrap. Everything that we've announced today is available for you to use right now. Here's a recap. FigJam widgets, widget code generator plugin, auto layout, variable fonts, outline mode, individual strokes, spring animations, password protected links, component props, favoriting files, review states for branching, international keyboard shortcuts, dark mode, and our new spotlight feature. Of course, before we end, uh, this was not just me. <laughs> we've had hundreds of people at Figma contribute to this effort. We have one of the most best teams on Earth, and I'm so thankful for all the Figmates who have worked so hard over the past year on these features and improvements. Uh, thank you to everyone at Figma who's been a part of this, and a huge, huge thank you to our incredible, amazing, amazing community. Uh, without you, we would not be here. I hope you have an amazing 24-hour config. Thank you all so much.